Good morning. Welcome to Bethesda Gospel Hall in Park Road in Hartlepool. And we thank you for joining us today. We're going to read two readings today, one found in Luke's Gospel and one found in Isaiah. Uh, we're going to read from Luke chapter 18 and from verse 35. But before we do that, we're going to open in a word of prayer. Father, again, we give you thanks for your goodness to us, for thy love to us and thy care to us. We thank thee again for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank thee that we can come before thee and we can open the Bible and we can speak concerning the person of the Lord Jesus. And we do pray, Father, that if there are those who are listening who do not know the Lord Jesus for themselves, do not have that personal relationship with him, that today will be that day when they would open their eyes and would accept him and receive him to be their saviour and their Lord. We just look to thee now, asking to bless us for the time that we have together. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. So we're going to read Luke chapter 18, and we're going to read from verse 35. Luke 18 and verse 35, and this is what it would tell us. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the way. He sat by the wayside and he was begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. Uh, but, but he cried so much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately... He received his sight and followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Now over into the Old Testament, and I want to read from Isaiah 55, and it is just two or three verses, or four verses in total, of Isaiah 55 and verse 6. It tells us, Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his faults, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my faults are not your faults, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my faults than your faults. And we know that God will bless the reading of his word. Between God and man, there is a great immensity that separates. It separates that which is finite, which ends, which from that which is infinite, which goes on forever and ever. There is something which separates the creature from the creator. There is something which separates those things. And God has bridged that immeasurable gap. And he's done it in one person. The person of his son. He's done that in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Isaiah here, he sees that. And there he urges the person who is listening, who is reading, he urges them of the imperative need 
a need which is great, a need which is immediate, and that is the need to heed God's offer of salvation while it's still available. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That tells me there is a time when he won't be found. Seek ye the Lord. It doesn't say seek religion. It doesn't say seek a church. It doesn't say seek a God. It says seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. Call ye upon him. While he is near. You see it's not just enough. To seek. You know when the children play hide and seek. They go and hide. And somebody goes to seek. And the seeker has to find the person. And they have to say I found you. It's no good that person just finding them and then walking off. And not telling them they found them. But to seek the Lord you have to call upon him. While he is near. There is two parts to it. You see you might remember a few weeks back. When we heard of the, the man who was the rich young ruler. He came running to the Lord Jesus. He was seeking him. But he was one of the very few people that we read in the Bible. Who went away sad. He sought the Lord Jesus. But he wouldn't go as far. Was calling upon him and accepting him for who he was. He said, what must I do that I inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus said, sell everything and give to the poor. And the man was sad because he was rich. He wasn't prepared to go that little way and trust fully the person of the Lord Jesus. But Isaiah here, he sees that important gap and he urges upon us the imperative need for closing in with God's offer of salvation while it's still available. He tells us, first of all, something that is sensational. Seek ye the Lord while he may be a famine, call ye upon him while he is near. It's a word of comfort. <clears throat> it's a word of comfort. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. But you know, it's also a word of caution. Verse 7, at the beginning of verse 7, it tells us, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his faults. And let him return unto the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his faults. And let him return unto the Lord. Notice that fact. Return unto the Lord. You see the Lord Jesus came into this world to bring us back to God. Not to bring God to us. You see, it was sin which separated us from God. Not separated God from us. God doesn't change. It was Adam and Eve in that garden. Sin caused that separation from God. And it's a word of comfort to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. To call upon him while he is near. But it's a word of caution. It's a word of caution to forsake the wicked way. For the unrighteous to forsake his faults and to return to the Lord. That's what repentance is. It is to come back and say, I've done wrong. The way I was going, I'm no longer doing that. And to have a complete change of direction. It is a word of caution. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his faults and let him return unto the Lord. But it's a word of compassion. You see the end of that verse tells us. And he. 
will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So as a word of comfort, to seek ye the Lord while he may be found, to call upon him while he is near, but it's a word of caution for the wicked to forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and to return unto the Lord. Because that word of compassion, for he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We know as well as something being sensational, there is something which is sublime. You see, the Lord's thoughts and his ways are distinctly different from ours. In verse 8 it tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. You see, our ways don't link naturally to the ways of God. When we think of the Lord Jesus Christ, his ways linked naturally to the God. He did always those things which pleased the Father. He followed his Father. He went and did everything that he could say. I do always those things which please the Father. And the Father could say, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Lord's thoughts and ways are distinctly different from ours. We see that in verse 8. But also they're dimensionally different from ours. Well, how is that? Well, verse 9 tells us, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Are we going to seek the Lord while he may be found? To call upon him while he is near? Are we going to forsake our way? And to go with his way? To stop doing the things that we want to do? And to say, lead me. The Lord Jesus said to the disciples, Forsake your parents. Forsake your job. Follow me. And what did they do? They left off and followed him. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, that he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon, for my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. The Bible tells us there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. It seems right, but it leads to death. The Bible tells us the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But we want to follow the way. The way of truth. The way of life. And that's found in one person alone. The Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth. And the life, no man follow, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. But then we see the illustration of this. In Luke 18, we see a blind man. And we see in verse 35 that it came to pass as he was come nigh unto Jericho, which was the Lord Jesus, there was a certain blind man sat by this wayside begging. Here was a man, he was blind, he was begging, he was sat down at the wayside. This was a common sight in the eastern lands. And there was a multitude of people, there was a crowd, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. So he couldn't see, but he could hear. And he heard a crowd. And once he heard the crowd and the noise of the crowd, he learned that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Because verse 37 tells us, And they told him 
that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. So now he's got a choice. He knows that there is somebody coming. He knows there is a crowd of people. <coughs> Excuse me. And he knows that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He could have just said, okay, well that's fine, that's nice. You know, we often see, don't we, in, a, in our local papers or in the, the town or whatever, oh, this person is coming. This person is going to open this building or there is this person performing here or... And we have choices. You know, if the Queen was coming to open something, there'd be people who would line the streets. It's soon going to be her jubilee, and there'll be parties and people planning all sorts of events. But Jesus is passing by. <clears throat> what does the man do? He heard the noise. He heard who it was. It was the opportunity of a lifetime. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Why was it an opportunity of a lifetime? Well, he may have heard of Jesus. Because what we're told is that they told him it was Jesus of Nazareth that passeth by. But then the man didn't say, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. But he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Somehow, he is aware of the Lord Jesus' ability to heal. Perhaps by this stage of the Lord Jesus' ministry, his reputation has been widespread. Somebody may have told him of how he raised the dead, how he healed the limb, how he gave sight to the blind. But the man, he cried for help. He cried in his need. And his only response was to cry to Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. But in verse 39, we find that they which went before rebuked him. They told him to be quiet. But what did he do? He cried so much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know, he could have said, I'm not doing this. He could have said, it's not worth it. He could have said, I don't believe any of that. It's what people do today. Some people have the opportunity and they say, I'm not interested. Some people say, you know, well, I'm not sure I believe that. This man, he cried to him. And when the people told him to be quiet, he cried all the more. You see, he wanted to see again. He wanted for the Lord Jesus to hear him and to have mercy on him. And he cried out for help. And his only response to his irritated neighbours who told him to shut up was to cry louder. You see, I said it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. You see, Jesus of Nazareth never came that way again. He never passed by that way. You see, this man didn't know that. He didn't know that the Lord Jesus wasn't going to go that way ever again. But what he did know is this. He had a need. And he called out to Jesus. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. That was the only time he had. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And from Jerusalem he went to Calvary. And at Calvary he died on the cross for you and for me. He died to save us from our sins. 
The Bible tells us, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none of a name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So he cried. And the people told him to be quiet. And he cried all the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. But then we find that the Lord Jesus, he stood. Or maybe it really means a bit more, he stood still. And he commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him. What did he ask him? He said, what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? The Lord Jesus asked him, asked the blind man, what do you want me to do? Now you might say, well, that was pretty obvious. He couldn't see. But you know, the Lord Jesus, he died for you and for me that he might take our sin away. But he doesn't just take our sins away. We have to come to him. We have to repent. We have to tell him that we're sorry. Acknowledge our guilt and our need. Just as it told us in Isaiah 55. We have to acknowledge our need. What did it tell us again? Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his fault. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. The Lord Jesus said, what will thou have me to do? And the man said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight. Thy faith have saved thee. Now why was it that he had any faith? Why was it that his faith saved him? Well, it was because he realized that the Lord Jesus could meet his need. He realized that the Lord Jesus was the only one who was able to help him. And he cried out to him. And the Lord Jesus, immediately, the man received his sight. And what did he do? And followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, they gave praise unto God what does it say in Isaiah seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways say the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This man, after receiving his sight, he followed the Lord Jesus. You see, it wasn't just that he might receive his sight, but he followed. He left what he was doing, and he followed the Lord Jesus. And he glorified God. That was a complete change. And that is what we need to do. We need to come to him. And we need to acknowledge our need. And we need to repent from our sin. Why? Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ does. And because of what the Lord Jesus Christ will do. And you might say, what do you mean? What he will do? He died. Ah, yes. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
He died. <laughs> he was buried. But he rose again. And he was seen of Cephas, Peter, then of the twelve. And after that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once. Then he was seen of James and the apostles. And then he was seen of the writer of the Corinthians. He died. He was buried. He rose again. Ah, he rose again, didn't he? Yes. Romans 4 verse 25 would tell us. Who was delivered for our offences and was raised again for our, or because of our justification. We are justified when we come to him. That is just as if we've never sinned. We've been acquitted of our sin. Ah, he lives. He died. He was buried. But he rose again. Hebrews 7.25 tells us, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, to make intercession for them. He died. He was buried. He rose again. So that's what Christ did. That's what Christ does. What he did was he died and rose again. What he does is he lives. What will he do? He will come again. John 14, in my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Do you know him? Have you come to him? Are you seeking him? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Because he's not always going to be here. He is going to come again for his own. And if you do not know him, it will be too late for you. Shall we pray? Father, again, we give thee thanks for thy goodness to us. We thank thee for thy love to us, thy care to us. We thank thee again for the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank thee, Father, that he died on the cross at Calvary for us. And that he loves us and cares for us. We thank thee, Father, that he came into this world and went to the cross at Calvary. And shed his precious blood at the cross at Calvary. That we might be saved. And we just pray now, Father, for thy continued help and blessing to be upon us. And we pray, Father, again for each one who have been listening this day, who have been hearing the message of the gospel, wherever they may be, reading the scriptures, hearing the verse is read, hearing the preaching of the gospel. And we just pray, Father, that they might come, call upon thee, while thou art still near. We give thee our thanks now. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.